So I wanted to do this up here because this is your city. I, as a kid who grew up here, I know how much it even not only means to me, but it means to you. And getting back here, time is always precious to get back here. Just for you to come back off season, however long you spend here, what's it mean just to get back in the capital city and, and be where home is? Uh, man, it means everything. This is where everything started. Um, I got the big Golden One Center here, just built. I got this hotel here. So just being able to see what my city went through from when I was younger to now, just seeing how much it developed, man, and just seeing things around me just develop and just me as a person developing and wanting to give back to the city. Um, Eric Armstead is one of those guys who kind of motivate me too. Um, he gives back a lot to Sacramento and uh, I'm f trying to follow his footsteps in a different aspect of, of things. But you know I me, mean? at the end of the day, it's the same meaning. So we both love to give back to our city, man. I love my city regardless of what's going on. And um, I'm always gonna come back. My family's here, you know what I mean? We laid my mom to rest here and um, so, I'm always gonna come back. When you do come back, and like you said, it's developing, things look a little bit different. Does it still feel like home or do you start looking around going, man, things have changed so much? Man, it's still home, it's always gonna be home. Regardless of what's being built, regardless of what's going on, man, it's always gonna be home. Right, born and raised is all I knew yeah. growing up. And um, I knew you for a while, for sure. you know what I mean? You've been following me since high school. So it's like, we still have that connection, you know what I mean? And. Uh, it's been great, so it's always going to be home for me. You mentioned with, with everything going on, obviously, it, it, I can't help but ask you about what it means when you come home and you see such tragic news, uh, something that's happened that really captures the world's attention. And to see it happen in your hometown, literally the second mass shooting in less than a little over a month. I mean, how does that kind of sit with you? Uh, it doesn't sit well with me because I knew one of them. Uh, mm. I'm not going to say his name, but I knew one of them. and He was very close to my family and close to my brother, you know what I mean? So it was family to me. And uh, just losing that and just losing people, just losing their life, you know what I mean? Just being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, it's devastating to me, it's heartbroken to me, man. I send all my condolences to the families. And um, I mean, that's something that we gotta stop. I mean, we gotta stop killing each other and all this stuff. I mean, it's crazy, cause I was saying this the other day, I was like, man, by like 2030, 2035, man, I think we may be extinct. And when I say extinct, I think my, my people, my male people, my black male people, if we keep killing each other, we keep knocking each other off, you know what I mean? That's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be building each other up, striving to getting better and conquering our power back, you know what I mean? And um, so we just got to stop killing each other. Mm. I know how what a cl to close, tight-knit community Del Paso Heights is, and, when, and it's not the first time that they've experienced tragedy like that. When they lose one of their own, what does that do to the community around them? I mean, it does a lot, you know what I mean? Good, bad, you know what I mean? But it's gonna bring it's gonna bring us closer, you know what I mean? It's gonna bring us more aware and things like that and try to get to a better place of stopping the violence, you know what I mean? And um, condoling stuff. That way, you know, we're able to raise our kids, we're able to be with our families and, uh, and not just be in a casket. Wow, that's well said. I mean, no easy segue from that, but you grew up in Del Paso Heights. Grant High School is your home, and this is the first year with no Mike Albergini as your head as the head coach of that program. Carl Reed takes over. Have you do you kind of monitor from afar? Does it make it harder to monitor from afar? I know that you know they still want to do big things with Pacers. Uh yeah. There's no uh, there's no Albergini, but yeah, you know I mean Carl's there, but my brother is there. Uh, my brother is there coaching and uh, he's helping with the program and stuff like that. So he got some good stuff going with that program and the kids are buying in, you know what I mean, to what they got going over there. And I've been over there, you know, as Grant's about to be back to what Grant used to be, you know what I mean? We had a little downfall a couple of years, but we, we'll definitely get back with my brother being there and uh, just that NFL experience. I would say this, man, if y'all want some NFL experience, make sure y'all kids go to Grant. Don't be scared of the community, man. We're great people out there. We just want to win, play football. You know what I mean? And send these guys, send these kids out to college, you know what I mean? Get them out of Sacramento and let them see the world. You know what I mean? There's a couple of us from Sacramento uh, who did that. I mean, I'm one of them, Eric's one of them, and we got Terrence Mitchell uh, and, ever, and a lot of more people. Yeah. Um, but so, you guys don't be afraid, man. Bring your kids to Grant, man. Yeah. We're, trying to, we're trying to get back to the top. And it starts, like you said, I mean, it, it starts with almost like a pipeline. So young, all the way to the high school level, the junior Pacers, all the way to the varsity team. I mean, just the family and the pipeline that so many communities have, but it's so important there as well, right? Yeah, no doubt. It's just that community, the, 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 the Del Paso Heights community, man, that's a tight knit, like you said, tight knit group, right? Everybody's family, from uncles to grandmas to great grandmas, you know what I mean? The cousins, everybody went there. Um, and everybody supports that that community, that team, 
and uh, man, it's just one big family at the end of the day. Okay. It's more, it's more than football. It's, it's really family. For sure. You go through the experience of playing at Grant. Here you are in the NFL, and you're coming off what some would call a career year. Do you still remember moments that you learned as a pacer that you took with you to the NFL? Um, leadership, you know what I mean? Uh, when I was here, a lot of guys were looking up to me, um, just being that leader, and that's kind of what I took there. I had great leaders when I was in Carolina, uh, Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis. Um, there's more, but those two were my, were my leaders, my role models. And um, just to be able to see the way they lead on that professional level, how they carried each other, how they carried themselves, how they carried themselves, their family outside of football. And um, I really got some stuff from them, some tricks and trades from them. And I just was able to add that to my, to my repertoire, my portfolio, and um, just grow from there. So I was lucky to have great leaders once I got to Carolina just to build my leadership. And then once, you know, once those guys in the high school, I remember Reggie Harris was a big part of that. Now he's coaching out here again yeah. on his second school. Um, what did Coach Harris mean to you? Uh, he meant everything to me. People don't know, I used to live with Harris. Um, my first, like, two years in high school. And he used to tell me one thing he told me. was like, man, he was like, son, if you listen to me and if you listen to me and follow me, man, I'll get you, I'll get you there. I'll get you to that next level. But listen to him, follow him, and I say, no, I have multiple offers. Ended up at the University of Washington. So it's like there's people out here, coaches out here, you know what I mean, who really care and really want to get people out of here. We want them to see them do good, you know what I mean, in their life and stuff like that. They see talent before you may even see it, honestly. And uh, Harris was a big part of my life. Uh, he coached all my brothers. He knew my family well. Um, he's still a family to us, um, even though he's at Intercom, you know yeah. what I mean? He's still family <laughs> to us. We still talk to him. But at the end of the day, it's us versus him. You right. know what I mean? For when sure. I say us, I say Grant. I always, I always think about my first impression of him. A little bit of the stereotypical football coach, always yelling, but you'll hear him before you see him. Yeah, you'll hear Harris, and, uh, but now it's, he changed, you know what I mean? Because back in the day, players like myself, and we were able to, we were able, like, this generation is sensitive. Yes. So we was able to, you know what I mean, obtain that rah, 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 you know what I mean? We was, we was able to take that with, with nothing else, you know what I mean? We, we wasn't getting soft, we wasn't getting sensitive about it, you know what I mean? That built us up. It was love. Yeah, it was love at the end of the day. It yeah. was tough love. And nowadays, I mean, even at the professional level, sometimes, like, this generation, they get sensitive when it comes to tough love. You know what I mean? Yeah. They get in their feelings. Yeah. And now I see, too, parents are a little bit that way as well. It's like, hold on. Like, this is me just talking. Make sure you play this. <laughs> this is me talking, like, hold on. Like, this is how you grew up. You grew up with the tough love. Let your kids grow up with the tough love. Right. So, and that's what's the good thing about my campus. My uncle been doing it for years. You know what I mean? I got my brothers, my cousins, people part of the community coming to help. And you know, and we bring that tough love. So it's like when you at the camp, just understand if you don't want to hear anything, go ahead and just take your kid and leave. Cause right. we're, gonna, we're not gonna change for nobody. You know what I mean? This is how we all grew up. This is how we got to the top. This is how T. Mitch got to the top. This is how James Sample, um, Eric, Carlo, all those guys. This is how they got to the top was tough love. Right. And when you get to college, your kid's going to experience tough love. And if they're not experiencing that now in high school, how do you think they're going to do in college? And once you get to the college, how do you think they're going to do in the league? Because this is going to be the same tough love. Right. So it's like we're going to have that. And kids got to understand like tough love. They want you, they're going to be on you because they want you to be great. Now it all depends on like, take your message. Yeah, you might not be like being yelled at, but take the good out of the message. Don't take the tone, take what, take what you need to take out of that message, right? My coach, told me, my coach, uh, coach Royal told us, if I tell you five things and you remember one thing, then that's the one thing that's important to you, right? And um, so rah, 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 just take what that message, take what they're saying to you put it in your head, put it in your thoughts, you know what I mean? Then go achieve yourself off of that. Don't get mad because somebody's giving you tough love. You know what I mean? They give me tough love because they want you to see they know what you can do. Yeah. So that, that was my biggest spiel about Man, that. That's, no, that's well said. I, got, got, I could probably go play now right now. No, I was going to tell you. <laughs> when you look at the camp, oh, let's go there real quick. What, what do you want people to take away? Kid attends your camp, what's the number one thing you want them to take away? Man, number the, one, the number one thing I want to take away is I mean, tough love, just because I've been through it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
I'm not going to feel no way about it just because I've been through it. I know how to get there. And that's one thing. But one thing I want them to know is, like, we're going to care for you. We're going to be here for you. We've got a lot of experience, NFL experience, college experience, coaching experience. Whatever you need out there, we're there for them. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're there for them. We want them, this younger generation, to blossom. Yeah. You know what I mean? We want to get more people out of Sacramento than ever. You know what I mean? I don't want to be, I know me, Eric, T. Mitch, all those guys, we just don't want to be the ones in Sacramento to get out. You know what I mean? We want everybody else to get out and go see the world because it's more than just Sacramento. For sure. There's a, there's a lot in this world you can go see and you might fall in love with. Um, but that's what we want to get out of this group. We're going to work hard. We're going to compete. We're going to grind. Tough love. And we're just going to have fun at the end of the day. Football's all about having fun. That's awesome. When you think about where you are in the league right now, do you feel like it's been this many years since, since you hopped onto the scene? As hopped on the scene as what? As an NFL player. So how many, what is this now? This is this seven, is eight. eight, eight years. Jesus, eight years. Does it feel yeah. that long? It definitely does. Um, I'm kind of back and forth with that um, because my first, the people always be like, oh, yada, yada, yada. But people don't understand my first four years, I'm behind. I played, but I was behind Luke Keekley. I was behind Thomas Davis. So my mileage wasn't that high. You know what I mean? I really didn't start playing inside backer until my fifth year. That's when they didn't bring Thomas Davis back. Mm. So if you think about it, yeah, I played, I'm going in my eighth year, but really I played three years as a starter. So my mileage is low, I'm about to be 28. Yeah. My mileage is low, you know? So I, it, it does feel like a long time, but then it doesn't. You know what I mean? Time goes like this, time don't wait for nobody. And those last three years, each one of them, 100 tackles. Yeah, the last three years, I 100 mean, tackles. Do you, are you sad? I mean, I guess an athlete, you're never satisfied unless you. I mean, I'm satisfied, especially last year. Um, I know you said something earlier about some people say it may be a career year. I think it was. You know what I mean? That's just me getting comfortable. Coaches helping me out, me understanding the game. Um, me just putting in that time. I used to be in the film room with Luke. Uh, We've been there, we start meetings, 8 o'clock, practice, whatever. We didn't leave till about 7, 38. So we there a whole 12 hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Watching film, going through practice and whatnot, shooting stuff with, with the people. But yes, yeah, it's, it's been a ride. That's amazing. What did it mean when you finally got the C on your chest? I uh, mean, it meant everything. You know what I mean? It meant that I withheld the standard that Luke and TD had left because they were both captains. Mm. And it means a lot coming from my teammates that they trust me and they see me as a leader. They see me as a guy that they can count on and they can follow. You know what I mean? That's big to have that seat on your chest. And um, I plan to keep that going for them. I almost, I'm always going to have their back regardless and I know they're going to have mine. So, you know what I mean, eight years in, they probably consider me OG <laughs> by now. But uh, man, I mean, that seat means everything. Final few for you. I know I got to, I don't get to cover you as much as I'd like to because you're across the country. But one of my favorite moments was being able to catch up with you at Super Bowl 50. I know it's probably a, a moment that if, and as an athlete, they lose. Sometimes they don't like to think much about it. Go ahead. No, <laughs> yeah, they do it. <laughs> you can come over here or something. Like, uh, uh, when you think about that game and that experience, what did you take from that moment and, and apply going forward? I took everything from that moment. That whole year I took in. It was a blessing. My rookie year, we went all the way. We went 15 and one. And the guys that we had on that team, all vets, just incredible guys, incredible leaders. And you know what I mean? And it was wild. I, I probably played with, on that team, probably four Hall of Famers. Um, and they were all cool. And you know what I mean? They all gave me game about the game. And they was all just like, this one one play I remember, or one thing I remember from, from that year. Roman Harper, he played safety for us. And I was a young buck out there playing, you know what I mean? Really not really knowing a lot. And he, he, he told me, he was like, look, he was like, Shaq, just go play. Like, you mess up, I'll make you right. You know what I mean? It's like hearing that from, Roman was probably 13 years in, hearing that from a 13-year vet, I was like, man, go play. Like, I got you. You know what I mean? Like, I'll play off of you. Right. Was, was, was big to my career because it allowed me to just go play fast. You know what I mean? Allowed me not to think. Just go. And um, 
that's what I st try to do now. You know what I mean? So I can't really say that to the DBs. I can say that to the D linemen. Like, and I, and I tell them, I'll be like, yo, just go. Like, whatever you do, I'm going to make you right. right. You know what I mean? Because we work hand in hand. You know what I mean? And so once he told me that, I was like, that's something that kept with me from my, throughout my career. But you mentioned Eric. And all these people at your camp that show up all have local roots. And you talk about there's bigger things in Sacramento that, that you expand the horizons. But you also look at what he's doing for his community. How much does that inspire you to not only do stuff in Sacramento and want to give back in Sacramento, but take also what you're doing in Charlotte as well? Uh, man, that means everything to me. Um, I think the very first person that kind of just like opened my eyes to that was Thomas Davis. Um, just because I seen what he was doing in Charlotte and stuff like that, but people don't know. Eric probably doesn't even know this. Eric, I'm gonna say this. But Eric was a big inspiration of why I kind of wanted to get back to Sacramento too. Um, after I seen what he was doing with his foundation and stuff like that, it kind of just put it in perspective. Like, man, I need to get back to my city. Man, he had something like that. It took me a little while because I had to think about what did I wanted to do. And um, on this segment coming up. <laughs> And that's what I got into uh, the dental, the dental aspect of it. Mm -hmm. That's why I came up. And then when my mom had passed away, I kind of have found my purpose is like, man, I want to help kids with dental care, poverty kids with dental care, because that's something I didn't have growing up. Right. You know what I mean? I never been to the dentist when I was a kid. Wow. Um, I kind of, I went to the dentist when I got to college and I really was able to take care of my teeth when I got to believe when I had my own insurance. Um, so that's why I started the TLF, the Thompson Legacy Fund Foundation, um, was to represent her, but also represent what I believe and I should be giving back in, and that's helping kids with the dental. You know what I mean? That's uh, cleanings, cavities, root canals, braces, Invisalign, whatever the kids need, um, we're, we're going to do that. You know what I mean? Because you only got one set of teeth and you got gums, but people don't know, like, there's a lot of... There's a lot of people out there, black people, I should say, black males, I should say, African-American males, that um, I read this statistic that 17.1 people, African-American males don't see the dentist mm. and have like something wrong with their teeth and gums and stuff like that. So that's what I want to change. Um, I want to get back to them and I want to show them like, here, you can build a routine, you know what I mean? Wake up, brush your teeth, and that helps with a lot of life environments, right? It helps you with organization, helps you with teams and life and get you through life. That's outstanding. When you look at um, it, it, something like that, you, you said, like you said, not only did you want to get back, but you can see an opportunity for giving back. It's almost like you see that your your town needs you. Yeah, I definitely do. I, I see my town needs me. You know what I mean? They need all of us, um, right? It wouldn't be anything if without being from Sacramento. You know what I mean? It wouldn't mean anything. Yeah, having all the money, yeah. That's cool, but it's like, I gotta get back to my city. It's not that I have to, I want to. You know what I mean? Eric doesn't have to, he wants to. So we're doing all this stuff from our heart. You know what I mean? And that's how much we love our city, that's how much we believe in our city, and we're trying to show our city we care about them, we're trying to show the poverty kids we care about them. Like, there's people out here who care about you. Yeah. We made it and we're coming back. You know what I mean? We're taking time out of our days, away from our families to come help. You know what I mean? And that's big, I don't think people understand that. Hey, Eric has a whole family. I got a whole family. And we're taking time away from our families to go help. Yeah. Yeah. When you come home, what's the spot? What do you have to do? What's like the, I got to go visit here. I got to hit this restaurant. Man, I gotta whatever. when I come home, I usually <laughs> just chill with my family. That's it. Honestly, uh, stay in the house. I may go see some other family and friends. But man, I usually just pop in <laughs> on the low. Oh, man. <laughs> right. I throw on my Harry Potter quilt. <laughs> You can't see me. Right. Yeah, I mean, but if, if you see me out, cool. But I, I'm really just coming in to see my family. Right. And, and dip. It's always been like that. And, and as we wrap up here, we got the NFL draft coming up. And I remember when you were drafted, I was trying to bang on your door to get in there. But fortunately, I had some people who could send me some video. What do you remember about that moment in particular? That really springboards it all. You're going from Washington right before the NFL. You're in your house. You're surrounded by loved ones. Your name gets called. What's that moment like? I mean, you said that. I was surrounded by my loved ones. My mom was there, my lady was there, uh, my brothers was there, my cousins was there, everybody was there. And I mean, it was a blessing just to know like all this work that I put in, you know what I mean, is about to pay off. Because I didn't have a backup plan. 
kids, you should have a backup plan. I didn't have one. I put all my eggs in one basket. I believed in myself. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of successful people out there who did the same thing that I did. Not football, but whatever, you know what I mean? They Business, lawyer, rapper, artist, you know what I mean? Whatever they did, they did the same thing. Um, so, but on that night, man, it was special. Um, just, just sitting there and waiting was probably one of the best parts. Cause you know, I mean, it's exciting. You don't know where you're gonna go. Right, right. And I was just like, man, as long as I get drafted, I really don't care. It could be first or seventh round. I just want to get drafted. I just want the opportunity. And so the draft start and it's going, boom, boom, boom. It gets to 20. And my agent calls me. He's like, yo, it's gonna start getting interesting around 20 to like second round or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. I, I put in my head like, all right, I'm gonna go second round. That's cool. It works for me. Then 24 came up, the Arizona Cardinals. Boom, then my phone rings. It's a 704 number, so I pick it up. And this is why Arizona's going, I'm, this is how it works. They call you right before they're about to pick you. So 24, I'm 25. Yeah. They calls me, hey, this is uh, Coach Ron Rivera. How do you like to be a Carolina Panther? I was like, oh, snaps. Like, this, this, is, this is surreal, like, I can't believe it. Like, man, I love to, yada, yada, yada. Talk to the GM, or Dave Gettleman. Talk to him, boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, he's like, all right, man, just tell your family, just watch the TV, watch the TV. Then, uh, boom, that's when Arizona had picked uh, Humphreys, DJ Humphreys uh, from Florida. Then he's like, all right, 25, the 25th pick came up, and Thomas Davis went up there. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and Thomas Davis went up there and called my name, yeah. and my whole family just went wild, man. And that was just, that was just a life changing. Called TD, called Thomas Davis, was like, man, I'm willing to learn with you and Luke. The funny thing is, though, my college coach was a big fan of Luke and TD. Okay. Like we used to watch them, like in college, like we used to watch just those two. And just to get drafted there, I was like, wow, this, this is crazy. That's like, like stars we, we, aligning. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I was starstruck when I got there. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah. it's Luke and Thomas. But that was that was how my night went, man. I had to fly out early next morning to get there and do what I had to go through. But it was it was a journey, and I loved it. Do you have advice for anyone who would be sitting through your shoes, be it someone who goes as high as you did or someone who may not get drafted at all? Always have confidence in yourself. Always believe in yourself and never put doubt in yourself. Um, I'm not going to lie. It, it Being one of the top picks in the first round, I have, Eric has, we have a lot of leeway. We have a lot of more room to do things. When I say do things, mess up and stuff like that. But if you don't get drafted, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? There's a lot of... Our league is made up with 90% of, un, like I would say, 75% of undrafted people, 80% of undrafted people. That's who make our league. So don't worry about if you don't get drafted or not. Just be happy that you got an opportunity. Because not a lot of people going to have that opportunity. People want to be in your shoes and stuff like that. I would say, man, always keep grinding, believe in yourself, like I said. And put your, God, put your faith in God and just let him have all, let him plan your life out. You know what I mean? Make sure you're doing the right stuff on and off the field, take care of your body, uh, take care of your mind, your soul, mental health. That's the biggest thing is take care of your mental health. And also, man, take care of your teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, TFL Foundation. <laughs> every every game you play, it seems like there's always someone from Northern California has a tie to Sacramento, Sacramento region. Yeah, there's a lot of people in the league, honestly, that I ran into that I was like, oh, I'm from Sac. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, the league is like a brotherhood. I mean, once you keep playing against people twice a year, you're starting to build that relationship. And uh, I built multiple relationships just through the NFL, just playing against, the, uh, playing against these guys, getting respect from these guys and stuff like that, man. I, I made tons of friends. Yeah, that's awesome. So if anyone's watching this, final question. I know I said that about 15 times already. Obviously, I got to ask you about your team. How, how, what, do you even know what to expect coming into a training camp? Man, I only I know what to expect on my side of the ball, which is defense. Yeah. Uh, we people don't talk about. It. We finished number two, number, the number two defense last year, Incredible. and uh, we didn't get that much recognition because our record. 
But uh, I can say this, expect us to do some big things, uh, especially the defensive side. Right. Um, we got a lot of good young players, got myself included, and uh, trying to go from number two to number one. We play against you Niners this year, yeah. so I know all you Niners fans are going to watch this. <laughs> so keep pounding. You're the man. Appreciate you. Anything right. you want to say that I didn't hit? Yeah, what well, people don't know is, is it still on? I, I am a... Uh, I am an owner of this beer company um, called True Colors. That's the company. Okay. But the beer is called True Light. So what the original owner did was he went to the, the, the police department in Wilmington, North Carolina. And he was able to talk to the gangs, like the top, top guys, the Bloods, the Crips, and the GDs out there. And he was able to get these guys to come work for him like these guys are talking about, they, they out there shooting, they knees deep in there, shooting at wow. each other. Yeah. And he was able to bring them in there. They do a lot of schooling, a lot of like uh, counseling. They got a gym in there. They do, he does a whole bunch. And it's like, 80, it's 80% gang members, 20% regular people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it all works out. Like it all mixes and matches. Like the gap or Girl, it's, to they're they're making a change like it reduced gun violence out there it gang violence out there so you know I mean at the end of the day and it's interesting just talking to these guys um but i talked to them they they was all saying they was knee deep and they all did time whatever i was talking to a man he killed somebody you know what i mean and just listening to this story is just unique and just understanding like the perspective like of gangs and stuff like that and what, what how they perceived it and but how they is but how we perceive it you know what i mean we perceive it different than really than what it is you know what i mean it's just like the mafia you're just going for money and you you right. you cross them then there's going to be an issue you know what i mean but these guys man they all came together they like best friends now bloods crips gds like best friends working at this beer company wow. um and they're, they're making change you know what i mean there's no gang retaliation none of that so wow. that's called true light man go check it out that's the beer, True Light, but the company's called True Colors. Um, great beer. As I say, it's got, got to be good beer, right? Beer. Yeah. It's a great beer. It's a great concept. Look it up when you guys I leave. I am, for sure. Can you get it out here, or is it? Uh, uh, well, they, they're working on working it. On you it. know what I mean? Okay. Right now, it's just in North Carolina. But, man, it's a great concept, and they're killing it right now. That's outstanding.